Welcome to example number three, the Balmer series for hydrogen. So in this question, we are given the energy level diagram that you can see over here shown to the right. We're seeing all these transitions uh, which represent the Balmer series. And the Balmer series are all the transitions from n equals three or higher down to n equals two. So those would be all considered the Balmer series. In the first part of the questions, part A and B, we're looking at the longest wavelength and we were asked to calculate the energy and the wavelength of that particular wavelength. And the next question, let me just do it in a different color, we're now considering the shortest wavelength, and we'd like to know what its photon energy is and its wavelength. And in the last part, they just simply asking, well, what is the shortest possible wavelength? Because parts C and D are really just referring to the ones that we can see in the series. There are more than what is shown. Okay, so let's start off with answering uh, part A and B. The first question you might be wondering is you look at these different transitions from 3 to 2 and 4 to 2, 5 to 2, 6 to 2 and onwards. We might be wondering, well, what is the, um, uh, which, which particular uh, transition would, it, would we have if we were looking at the one that has the shortest wavelength, or sorry, the longest wavelength. And if you recall, E equals HC over lambda, right? And so the, the longer the wavelength, the smaller the energy change. So we're looking really at the series where you have the smallest change in energy. And when you look at that, that's really basically the shortest arrow here. So for, for part A and part B, uh, we're looking at N equals 3 to N equals 2 transition because that will give us the smallest energy change. So uh, for part A, let's find that energy. That change in energy is really the difference of the energy. So the energy at the upper case, okay, so I'll write E and the upper transition minus E at the lower transition. So that change in energy would be what well, three, it is negative 1.51 electron volts. And at the lower one, it is negative 3.40 electron volts. So that's gonna give us an energy change of 1.89 electron volts. Okay, I could probably write this in joules, but I think that's fine just to leave in electron volts. Okay, so now let's go on to calculate the wavelength. So remember E equals HC over lambda. So to calculate that wavelength of that transition. So imagine that this is now going to emit a photon, right? That has a particular energy change. That's going to be equal to HC over lambda. So there's a particular wavelength for that. So that wavelength will be HC divided by the energy change. So because my energy is already in electron volts, I'm going to choose to use the constant uh, 1.24 times 10 to the power of 3 electron volts and nanometers. That way, I'll just get an answer that's in nanometers. And this produces a wavelength of 656 nanometers. Okay, so that's for part B and part A. So now we're going to move on to part C and D. Now, um, there is a fourth, well, for one, two, three, four, five, five transitions in here, but really, I'm going to consider I can't see that one because the problem is I'm not given that energy. So what we'll do is we'll just omit this one and just imagine that we only have these three energy level, four level energy changes. So for part C and D, the one that has the shortest wavelength, right, that's lambda being smallest, that would be the one where the energy change is the largest. So we're going to be looking at the transition that goes from six to two. Now there are more, like seven, that's shown in here, but I, I wasn't given the value, so that's why I'm not going to calculate that. So for part C, let's find that photon energy. Again, it's the energy of the upper state. I'll just read your E in the energy of the lower state. So the energy of the upper state is negative 0.38 electron volts, and the energy at the lower state is at n equals one is 3.4 electron volts. So now if we take the difference of those two, we get an energy of 
zero to electron volt. So that's our energy change. Okay, and so we move on to part D. Let's calculate the corresponding wavelength. And we're just using the equation we had before. It is that change in energy, or just E, uh, divided by, uh, oops, no, 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 that's on the denominator, sorry. It's going to be HC divided by delta E. Okay, this could be a delta E if you want to call it. So 1.24 to the power of 3 electron volts, nanometers, divided by 3.02 electron volts. And I get an energy, or sorry, a wavelength of 411 nanometers. Okay, it might be slightly different from what I have down here in my answers. All right, that's pretty close. That's 412 in here. And I imagine the reason why I'm a little bit different is because of the constant I'm using for HC. Okay, the last part is, well, what is the shortest possible wavelength, right? Now, as I noted earlier, I crossed out 7, but 7 is really there too, right? But that's not the shortest one, right? Really, the shortest one is going to be right from as close as you can get to infinity. It's right here. So the shortest possible wavelength would be going from n equals infinity to n equals 2. Okay, so for part E, for shortest wavelength, we're looking at n equals infinity to n equals 2. Now, if you remember up here, n equals infinity is essentially an energy of zero electron volts. So the change in energy is going to be energy at the upper state minus the energy at the lower state. Energy is basically zero minus uh, 3.4 electron volts or minus minus that. So this really the energy change is simply the energy it has at the ground state of n equals 1. Okay, so now to find that wavelength, remember we're just going to use hc divided by that change in energy. So 1.24 to the power of 3 electron volts nanometers divided by 3.4 electron volts. And I get around 365 nanometers. So that is the shortest wavelength that you would get, okay? Going from the highest possible quantum state level down to n equals two. All right, and that's it for this example.